Mr. Alston, what is your reaction to the IPC's damning report? Well, the IPCC report is indeed damning, isn't it? And um, you know, it's pretty humbling to be here today as Police and Crime Commissioner, looking at the consequences of that. The first thing I think, my first reaction is just one of enormous sympathy for for the family of Maria Stubbings. Uh, what they've gone through, I can't imagine what they've gone through, but. Uh, I do admire how they've seen this through, how they've challenged the IPCC to make sure that actually they've really got as far as they can into the truth of what happened. Um, so the first one is one of really of, of sympathy with, with uh, the family of Maria. Secondly, you know, that I feel they have moved the debate forward you know, really significantly by challenging the IPCC report, really wanting to understand what went on. I think that's very important. So those are the, those are the first things I think I would say. Uh, then I suppose the second one for me is that from the day I started finding out about Police and Crime Commissioner in Essex and what it might mean, I heard a lot about domestic violence. I heard members of the force talking about it, I heard the leadership talking about it, I heard officers talking about it. More importantly, I heard members of the public talking about it, particularly in the women's refugees, for example, that I visited last year and, and indeed this year across the county, uh, to, for me, uh, uh, a, a dawning of, of how serious this problem is. I had no idea how serious it was until I started to, 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 to find out about this job. And then to realise how pervasive it is. You know, you've heard the, the Chief Constable talking about the numbers, 80 a day, and that's an astonishing number of incidents. And then just how awful it is for the victims. So there's, that's how bad it is, how pervasive it is, and then how difficult it is to deal with. You know, there seem to me to be no easy answers to this. And I've spent really six months now in this role, or six months tomorrow, uh, in this role, uh, understanding where, you know, best practice might be, looking for that best practice, but actually finding it very difficult to find. I've talked to experts around the county, I've talked to national experts, I've talked to the universities, and uh, I've spoken to a very wide range of, of experts in the county and outside but to try and understand what their best practice is. And I think one of the things, I, I again, I respect and admire about what the family have called for uh, in, in their reaction to the IPCC report is to say that we do want to look to get, you know, to find that best practice, to get it established, not just for the police, but with all the other agencies who can make a difference in trying to prevent uh, domestic abuse and then looking after the victims when it does happen. Commissioner, have you any idea, in-depth idea, regarding the Maria Stubbings case as to what was the pivotal problem to it? No, and I don't think really, I, I don't think I really want to offer that commentary. I, and I'll tell you why, I mean, th these things are immensely complicated. I've read the report. I was privileged enough to be able to see the report at draft stage back in, I think, February. Um, and firstly, it was, a, it was a, a very difficult report to read, just, you know, the, the awareness of what Maria went through, what her family went through, what her then um, teenage son went through. You know, that was tough. But it's also tough to understand the complexity um, from a policing point of view. I, you know, I am not a policing expert. That's the job of the Chief Constable, to be the expert and to run the force in the way that it needs to be run best. Um, so I don't think I want to offer a commentary about what I feel went wrong. That's, that, that's why there was the IPC. That's what the IPCC is there for and why, again, I respect uh, the, the Maria Southern's family for pushing so hard to get at the, the real facts. Uh, and now, I would say to anybody and everybody, and I've said this consistently and repeatedly in recent months, not just about domestic abuse, but about all crime, we have to have the confidence to report it to the police. If you feel you can't report it to the police, you know, either as an emergency or using the 101 number, then, then use Crime Stoppers. Crime Stoppers, for example, uh, can take that information anonymously but make sure it gets through to the police and be actioned. If those are not aware of it, let's give it a plug. It's 0800 555 111. We really have to report our concerns. And I've talked, obviously, I, you know, I've talked with the, with the new Chief Constable about this. I've talked about with the old Chief Constable too. Um, I've visited the Force Control Room. I've listened to those calls coming in. We really do need to encourage everybody to have the confidence to report their concerns. Commissioner, do you believe that in Stephen Kavanagh we have a Chief Constable who can turn the tide? Well, turn the tide. I mean, I, you know, I, I really think the tide had turned. I, I, this is, you know, 
for me, this is a journey. It's not about, a, you know, we, about changing direction. We can't keep changing direction on such important things. You know, I looked when uh, Jim Barker McArdle, the previous uh, chief councillor, he did all the candidates in the elections last year, the courtesy of letting us know before the election he was going to re retire. Um, so it was very much on my mind uh, about the sort of person I wanted as a new chief constable. Um, but this wasn't just to change direction. You know, the previous chief had done an enormous amount to make the savings that had to be made in Essex Police to make some really fundamental changes. Uh, but the new chief constable has, has got a lot to do because everybody I talk to in the force, it's not just outside, but within the force, everybody wants to do a better job. Everybody wants to do the best job they can. So finding a chief officer who I felt had got the skills to do that. And we were really lucky in Essex. We had an outstanding number of good candidates um, to, uh, to take an interest in the job. And then we finished up with five really strong, um, strong applicants on our shortlist. Uh, and when I looked at uh, Stephen Cavanagh, his background, looked at his, you know, his passion for Essex, his knowledge of policing, the work he's done both as a territorial police officer, but also as a, as a detective, as well as more recently handling some really sensitive stuff at national level, it seemed to me we had a, a really outstanding officer. Uh, he was the best on, on the day, um, and I'm, I'm really optimistic about how he will do. He's not going to shirk the issues in the way that I haven't shirked the issues. You know, we've, we're talking about today about domestic abuse, but for me that's at the heart of our plan. You will have looked at our police and crime plan. The only crime type I mention is domestic abuse because it is, as I said, it's so important to the people of Essex, it's important to the Essex Police. The Chief brings new ideas to that, um, new energy, a new vision, new commitment. Um, but I, let's not talk about um, you know, turning the tide. This is, this is about you know, building on what's been done before. Uh, Commissioner, you are the first police commission, crime and police commissioner for Essex, in fact, in the country. It's a, a new position. Where do you go to as a for your inspiration? Gosh, well, where do I go for inspiration? Uh, as, uh, where I've gone to right from the start of this is just talking to the people of Essex. You know, from, from the first day that I took an interest in, in this job at the beginning of last year, I've spent you know, day by day going around talking to people around Essex, all around Essex, uh, people of all sorts. Um, and it's been tremendous, the inspiration I've taken from them, because this is about reconnecting our police, the Essex police, with the communities they serve. You know, I'm, I'm an Essex boy. I, okay, in some part, I come from Essex police family. My dad was an Essex policeman. So I feel a strong affinity for Essex police. But basically, I'm an Essex resident. You know, I've lived here you know, all my life. I've been based here. My family are here. I have friends here. Um, and, and I take that inspiration from what the people of Essex say to me. Of course, you know, there's a lot more to it than that. And, you know, talking with other colleagues up and down the country. Um, uh, police and crime commissioners uh, of all hues, um, uh, and also uh, you know, academics. Uh, I'm on the board of the Jill Dando Institute uh, at uh, University College London, really interested in, in, in crime science, so I've got an academic interest. I've talked to those experts, we talked earlier about domestic. So that broad um, breadth of, 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 of inspiration, if you like, and of course, let's make the point again, talking to police officers. That, you know, every single police officer I've talked to, and members of the police staff of Essex Police, want to do a great job and so some of that inspiration just is about creating the opportunity helping them create the opportunity sometimes to do that really good job ultimately of course though it's about holding the police to account so yes i'm talking to them and listening to them and yes i'm i'm, I'm you know I'm, I'm planning good things with the new chief constable but it's my role to hold him to account um, so you know today we've heard lots of words but it's actually going to be about action it's the action that matters and week by week, I meet the Chief Constable to make sure that you know, the Essex Police are delivering for the people of Essex. Commissioner, what would you say to the family of Miria Stubbings today? Gosh, I, 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 would, I, I would offer the thought that I, if I had the chance to talk to them, and I did offer through their solicitors to meet them if they'd find it helpful, but to be honest, you know, I'm sure their concern is with, with Essex Police and with others. But the first thing I would say, and echoing everyone's sympathy with them, and anybody who's read um, the, the IPCC report could have nothing but the deepest sympathy for the family. Um, and to say to them how much I admire um, their determination to see this through, and uh, their determination to make things better for other people, I think, uh, I think it's a remarkable um, achievement that they've been able to see all that through. 
Finally, Commissioner, what would you say to a battered wife in a town in Essex, in a village in Essex, frightened out of her wits, bullied, humiliated? Should she go to Essex Police? I would say to anybody who, who knows about a domestic violence case, whether you're the victim or, or, or the son or the mother or, the, or, or, the, or, or a relative of that person, of course there may be male victims too, uh, but yes, please report it to somebody. It may not be the police, you may not be comfortable talking to the police, but talk to somebody you trust who can help you find a way through it. The Essex police are well able to be very sensitive about how they deal with it. But please say something, please do something to, 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 to make, start to make things better.